it seems like you guys do a lot of like similar work that we do, like a lot of handrails. Yeah, we're we're starting to to kind of niche into the residential market for ninety five percent of our work. Okay. Uh, we, we started out doing a bit of both commercial and residential. Um, there's definitely pros and cons to both. Uh, we found that in our area anyways, there wasn't much competition for the residential. It seemed to be a good fit for us. And what I started to feel like was that we either needed to pick one or the other. We, we started doing that as a way of, I can't ask the guys to, you know, one day put on their structural hat, one day to put on their high end finish hat. So we just said, you know, we're going to do all of one and we're going to focus on that. So when we get off the guide rails a little bit, it really hurts. Uh, we tried doing red iron steel and the guys are making, you know, thousands of ancient tolerance and holes and it's not efficient. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Yeah. So yeah, we, uh, you know, we know where our, where we're good now and we stay there. Nice. That's awesome. We've got a pretty good name going in our area. The architects, designers, landscape architects, they'll spec us on drawing. So we're getting a lot of calls that are, you know, guaranteed to us. We're not really bidding work per se. Um, so it's a nice spot to be in. We've worked really hard to get that respect and, and try to maintain it with everything we do. And uh, I think we just want to be a little smoother and better about what we do here. Meaning, you know, get the support to not be running 50 hours a week with everybody. Yeah. How, so back it up a little bit. How did you get spec by the architects? Because that's something uh, I've been looking into getting into. Whew. But And it's like, well, like, do you ask? Like, where do you start with this? So I've never asked for it. No, it's, it's an enormous flattering compliment as you can imagine um the first time i got a call and said hey your name is on instead of drawing so can you come give us a price i was floored um we created a product that i guess was unique in a sense it was an aluminum pergola that was comparable to a wooden structure that you might see but this was powder coated aluminum had some really intricate detail in it and that same architect went to a new job and said, hey, I think that's a perfect fit for this outdoor space. We're putting in a cabana and a pool and all these things. That's what I want. So they put it on the drawing. Um, and it's, it's down to relationships. I mean, I've, if there's one thing I've learned back to the original story, those restaurant owners knew somebody that knew somebody that knew somebody that needed my work. Yep. I still take care of those restaurant guys today, like old mob bosses sort of thing. <laughs> they call me up. In fact, oh my gosh, one of them just needed a sign for a new restaurant. Man, this was two weeks ago, three weeks ago. He, he's got to have 10 restaurants at this point around town. Um, hey, Nick, I need a sign. No problem. You'll have it. What do you need it? Um, you know, no questions asked. There's usually not even a bill. It's just done at this point. There's, uh, they've made so many connections for me over the years. Sure. It's who you know. It, it comes back to those relationships, cultivating them, whether it's my vendors, whether it's the clients that tell, you know, other contractors, treating other contractors on site with respect. I mean, every bit of it, it's always all relationship building. If you were to do it all again and start all over again, what would you do differently? What would I do differently? You know, I think I would ask more advice from the people that have given me advice now earlier. Um, I think early on, I wanted to be very proud of doing it on my own. I was very stubborn in that sense. I, I didn't want the help. And I think it doesn't have necessarily have to do with even owning the business. It's just me getting older and, and realizing the more I know, the more I realize I don't know um, or didn't know then. But for whatever reason, I wanted to do it myself. I wanted to be proud of learning it the hard way. Um, and in hindsight, I've had some phenomenal mentors that all along were telling me the same advice. It wasn't until I started taking it that I got more successful. So I think, uh, you know, that might be the one thing that I tell myself is put your pride away and, you know, accept help. It's not weakness. If people want to help you succeed. It, let them. So what kind of inspiration do, do you listen to as far as like podcasts and books and like what keeps you going and what, what fuels your uh, continuous yeah. learning? Yeah. So we have uh, our client, my clients. Um, I guess I could say that 
we pretty much cater to the one percent. Okay. So they are fairly high end clients with some wealth. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those times where when they talk, I listen. And I've gotten to have relationships with them that most of the subcontractors don't because of the scale of work we do or how involved it is or how, how much they interact with it, such as the stairs in their home. Um, so they want to have a lot of input. And when I get to talk with those guys, the things they say just resonate with me for months. Sometimes I'll, I'll think of, a, you know, one, one little 10 minute interaction, all of a sudden will ping something months down the road for me. Uh, those guys are always alluding to things that are, they're kind of hinting at stuff. They're, they're telling me what I should be looking at. Um, I joke, one of my guys is a investment banker. I said, what's, what stocks are you looking at today, Ed? <laughs> um, you know, they, my, I have some great clients basically that, like I said, those are the guys that have helped me to succeed. Um, they, they want to help me succeed because I keep bringing more work to them. They, they want to help, but they, they offer good advice. So I think it's find people that you trust and put your trust in them and, and follow it. You know, I mean, I'm going to go through like you, you know, unabashedly said earlier, we weren't really following each other earlier. I'm going to go look through your podcast. Here what other owners said, what can I glean from them? What have they done that I haven't done yet? What mistakes have they figured out that I haven't even hit yet? Yep. Um, I love that too. You know, learning from each other's it, there's not much magic to this. It's show up, do your job, pay the bill, get paid. Um, yep. You know, there's just a lot more to it. Obviously, there's layers and layers. I don't know what I don't know, but some of the guys you talked to have probably been through it. You know, they're 10 years in, there's 15 years in. Yep. They're in a different sector. So they've dealt with customers. Um, you know, an example is I, up until recently, had, hadn't worried about anybody not paying me. That's a, an issue every business owner has, right? Yeah. Well, all of a sudden I got a concern that I might not get a pay once from a, a general contractor and I didn't know what to do. And man, was that scary. Somebody all of a sudden was holding out a lot of money. You know, they were, they went 30 days, they went 60 days, they went 90 days. Okay, we're, we're at a hundred days, guys. We need to, what's going on? It's sure. a lot of money. Um, you know, and that I didn't know what to do. I, what recourse do I have? I, I don't even know an attorney. Who do I call? How do I, how do I deal with this? Yeah. But there's guys I'm sure that you've talked to that have been down that road and have things in place today to help prevent that. I want to put those things in place today without the experience. Yep. <laughs> well, th those are good problems to not have. So <laughs> consider yourself lucky. <laughs> I do. I do. We're, for, we're very fortunate in that sense. So how do you... Um, do you take, so is your customer base kind of the same contractors and builders or do you, uh, seek outside, uh, like new, uh, new customers and how do you market your business, uh, uh in a so way that don't. Just, you don't, it's completely word of mouth. Wow. Dang. And okay. It is 100% word of mouth. Uh, I haven't updated my website in five years. It's embarrassing now. I mean, it's a, a fine website and, and it has some of our very early work on there. What I found was that most of these clients don't want pictures of their homes published. Mm. Um, so it's a, a good and a bad thing, right? I can't really show off what we do all the time. Every so often I, I show glimpses or we can, you know, put up tease pictures or, or small nuggets, but nothing, nothing of the, the full scale of what we're doing. Yeah. But it doesn't really matter. I mean, again, back to social media, it's fun. I love showing off what we do and, and oohing and on ah with people that I don't know. But really, our clients go to their neighbor's house and say, hey, Joe Millionaire, I'm also a millionaire. Who did your stairs? Oh, Nick yeah. did them? Let's go get Weldworks to do our stairs. And, and that's been our business at this point. I mean, it's all word of mouth. We've gotten from, we've reached all the way down to New York City at this point. Um, our clients have multiple homes. So- yeah. They have vacation homes. So they have a primary residence down in New York. And then the same thing has snowballed where we were down in New York. We met a subcontractor that also is over on job B, not related to our original one. And all of a sudden we have connections down in New York. And it's, you know, that's truly the, the hustle of make those connections, make the, you know, it's weird how the plumber is the one selling my job at millionaires houses or things like that. 
but yeah, it's, we don't, we're in a very unique situation. Wow. That's awesome. That's really interesting. 